Good morning. It is Wednesday, December 26th. Happy late to Merry Christmas. Happy late. <laughs> Whatever. So, um, it's a little chilly. It's 18 degrees here in Auburn, Maine. Um, but it's warmer than what it was before, so we'll deal with it. Um, Christmas was great. Um, everybody was happy with what they got for Christmas and, and, um, they were disappointed that I didn't cook, but hey, it is what it is. Um, I just didn't have money to buy a feast of food plus gifts. I just, I just didn't have it. So, and food that I can't eat anyway. So, so sorry. Um. what it is um I didn't get anything so I have nothing to brag about but everybody was happy with their gifts which is great um so eating wise so trying to find things that I can eat that is giving me the protein and the iron is really hard um but I did refer to the packet that my doctor's office gave me and I'm happy to say that I'm able to have, which really makes no sense, like it really makes no sense. <laughs> this is so, so contradicting of what they say. So I can have deli meats, shaved, you know, thin, thin deli meats, but I can have deli meats. That's not pureed and that's not mushy. Um, so whatever. So I was thinking, like, if I buy deli meats, I can make kind of like mini sandwiches out of them. Um, so I can't have raw vegetables yet, which really, really stinks because I really want a salad. Um, I want to make so many different things that I can't make because I can't have raw vegetables. Um, I'm just really, really disappointed. But, okay, whatever. So, I will figure it out. So, we will, so I had, I made pulled chicken. And without the barbecue sauce, just because I didn't have any. Um, and I'm going to have to learn how to find or make my own. Um, because, of course, the barbecue sauce on the market has lots of sugar and additives in it. And, of course, I don't want that. Um, so, I'm going to have to look up a recipe on how to make my own barbecue sauce that's a little bit healthier than what's on the market of course I will tweak it because you know me I'm not going to eat just you know plain barbecue sauce so I have to come up with that but with my pulled chicken basically what I did was I put um, I put it all in the crock pot with some a package of cream cheese and a bunch of seasonings oregano parsley um basil, garlic, um, garlic powder, garlic salt, adobo, and um, salt and pepper. And I let it cook up. And the gravy didn't come out as thick as I wanted it. I wanted it to be a little thicker and it didn't come out thick. It's kind of runny, but that's okay. Um, I wanted to give it over, feed it over. I wanted the guys to have it over rice. We didn't have any rice, so I just made mashed potatoes for them to have it over. And of course, I had a little bit of mashed potatoes. I can't eat a whole lot, so I put just a little bit. I mean, it was very, very little, and I put the rest as the chicken, so that way I get the protein from the chicken. But um, it was really, really good. So good that my son Michael almost ate the whole thing. <laughs> so my dad liked it. My grandkids liked it. Um, my grandkids finished my plate because I'm using a um, dessert plate or tea. No, I think it's a dessert plate. I don't think it's as small as a tea cup plate. Eh, excuse me. And, um, of course I couldn't finish it. And so they finished it for me, which is fine. Um, but it was cold. Because, of course, our food gets cold after a while. Um, got into a heated debate with my husband about eating healthy. And, and he is on this kick, like, not this kick, 
he truly believes that based on what he's read, which is not scientific or anything like that, it's just mumbo jumbo that he's read. Um, but I'm not going to discredit how what he believes in. It's what he believes. He can have his beliefs. He believes that we should not be eating anything that that's living. So I. I constantly am just proving him on that, on those facts, um, you know, giving him scientific evidence of how, you know, the ancients, you know, our ancient relatives ate living things. So he'll say in one breath, we shouldn't be eating anything that's living, but then in the next breath, he says we should be eating fish. Well, you can't have it both ways. You can't eat, you can't say we shouldn't have anything that's, eat anything that's living, and then go and eat a fish because that's living and I hate to break it to you but plants also live as well I mean they don't have heartbeats but obviously they're living if they grow the only thing that doesn't grow are dead things so if it's growing it's living so therefore you're still eating a living thing so to say that you should not be eating a living thing is false you, you're contradicting yourself now, I truly believe that you should be eating based on your genetics, not your environment, environment, because we are all in different areas of where our genetics are, but we should truly be eating based on our genetics, because that's really where you, how your body is made and able to function and, and digest the food naturally and so I believe I truly truly believe you know that if you are from Europe you should be eating more of a diet geared toward what people in Europe eat no matter where you are in the world you should be focusing on that and of course it's going to be harder to get some of the things that in different areas of the country based on where you're living but I truly believe that, you know? So, like, it's kind of hard if you're mixed, like myself, you know? So, I have Irish, I have Italian, and I have African in, in, in my DNA. So, it's kind of hard to say, okay, this is what I should be eating. But out of those three, I have to find one that works better for my system and I truly believe that that would be you know a mixture of a low carb high protein medium fat diet so and the reason why I say that is because um, you know of the nutrients that are supplied to individuals um, in those regions so you know, Irish, it's cold, so they have limited to, you know, fruits and vegetables depending on where they're at. Italian, you know, is more of a, a uh, sugar, carb-based, fish-based diet. And then Africans are more of a um, fruits and berries and um, vegetables-based meal with some fish so you see the pattern in that one is fish is two out of three however um they all have the same thing of um uh, complex carbs with natural sugars and high in protein because fish is high in protein and so is meat so that should be the diet that I have, which is, you know, a keto diet, just tweaked a little bit, you know, because keto is high fat, low carbs, medium protein. And I'm saying I should have high protein, medium fat, low carbs. Now, I also have evidence that high protein for myself works. And this is why I say that. Before surgery, I was... I bumped up my protein, lowered my carbs way before I even started 
the two-week diet, I bumped up the protein. On my own, without the two-week diet, without the surgery, I lost 30 pounds. It had nothing to do, I didn't change anything else that I ate, because I was, you know, I'm, I eat pretty healthy for the most part. I mean, of course I eat, sometimes I'll go to McDonald's, or I'll go to Subway, or, you know, those type of things. I'll have, a, you know, before, not anymore, but before, you know, I would have, you know, cake with peanut butter frosting or whatever. But the majority of the time, I ate fairly well. Majority of the time. If you go through my thing, my, my diary, my food diary for the last three years, which is probably deleted actually since I unsubscribed to my fitness pal, but if you go through my diary for the last three years, you would see that I ate lots and lots of chicken, lots and lots of salads and those type of things, fruits and vegetables. So, um, you know, the little bad things here and there just didn't make a difference. It's just I didn't have enough protein. And so once I bumped up a protein, that's when I started to lose the weight. Now, of course, I didn't notice it. I still don't notice it, and I'm 46 pounds down. But that is evident that I need a high-protein, low-carb, medium-fat diet. Now, medium-fat, I say, because... Your body needs the fat to be able to, you know, your brain work, you know, can process fat better, blah, 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 blah. So I say high protein, medium fat, low carbs. And I say low carbs because, as we know, carbs turn into insulin. And obviously, too much insulin, you know, makes sugar, which then, you know, gets in your belly. And obviously, I have extra belly fat. So therefore, I store the insulin. So I need to get rid of the carbs. So I'm saying my goal, once I'm at Full Foods again, my goal is to stay at the 60 to 80 marker for protein. My goal is to stay at the 64 ounces of fluids, which I have not been getting, but I'm going to try to get there. i got to find something that I like to be able to get there. And then, so, the, you know, 60 to 80 grams of protein, and then... I'm going to say I'm not going to have any more than 30 carbs, 40 carbs tops, because that's what I was trying before, was I was at no more than 40 carbs. Sometimes I would hit 50, but no more than 40 carbs a day. And of course, complex carbs account toward that, but they really don't, but they count toward that. And then, um, you know, the fat is just extra, whatever, whatever the fat is. So those are my goals, and when I get back to full, full eating and exercising, obviously, because exercising needs to be in there regardless. You need to be moving in order to lose weight or maintain the weight loss. To stay healthy, you have to move. So I'm looking for a treadmill. I will probably buy a treadmill this weekend, um, secondhand. Because um, I need one. Plain and simple. It's too cold. It's 12 degrees outside. I'm not walking in 12 degree weather. You know, I have no problem walking in 60, 70, 80 degree weather. But I'm not walking in 12 degree weather. I'm just not going to do it. Um, so, those are my goals. And that's where we're at with that. Um, so, I strongly suggest anybody who's trying to lose weight or going through the gastric bypass or the sleeve or whatever it is, seriously take a look at where you're at. And don't just go and say, oh, because you're, you know, you're, they do, they say this is what's best for me, this is what I should do. No. You need to listen to your body and what works best for your body. That's what you need to listen to. And of course, I'm going to have to tweak those numbers because, you know, your body starts to adjust to them and get used to them. And then you build up the, the protein and you build up all of the nutrients that you need. So you no longer need that. So then you plateau. And so now you have to tweak stuff. You have to lower your intake in certain things and up your intakes in other things. So, of course, that happens. Um, I mean, it's just inevitable. But that's what the plan is in the beginning stages. Right now, I'm trying to focus on at least trying to get in food and, you know, liquids 
that's what I'm focusing on. But, you know, I know all of that will come in time. I just try to find a liquid that I like that I can keep drinking. Um, so, you know what I say, um, you know, the best investment you can make is an investment in you. And what are you investing in you today? I'm still investing in me and trying to find out, you know, the happy medium with this protein and liquid um, stuff. I may at this point just finally say I'm done trying to get the liquid protein in and just focus on getting the liquids in and then the protein can come from my foods because it's not really working with the liquid proteins. I'm not liking any of them and so it's not working. So I may just say forget about the liquid proteins and just focus on, you know, the liquids and eating my protein. So you guys have a great day, and I will check in with you tomorrow. Bye-bye.